In this video, I'm going to explain to you why the perfect swing doesn't exist. But first of all, welcome. I'm Mr. D, but you, my friend, you can call me Thomas. I make video about my journey of trying to make, to master the game of golf. And as I go, I'm sharing my thoughts, my experience, so you can improve as well. So, thank you for watching and let's get to the topic of today. The perfect swing. Why doesn't it exist? <laughs> First of all, we need to define what the perfect swing is. The perfect swing is, for any person that is kind of perfectionist, like me, <laughs> the perfect swing, at least to me, and I don't know if it's for everyone, is the idea that you, if you have the perfect motion and you repeat this perfect motion with every club, you are going to achieve perfect ball flight every single time but that's um, very ideal and probably unrealistic but if you like uh, if, if at any moment you like the video don't hesitate to smash the like button don't forget <laughs> but so this idea of perfect swing there is flows to that first of all there is flow, of course, about the game, but that, um, as a perfectionist, I would say you can get by really easily because even though, okay, the slope of the course and so on, you are not in the best perfect condition to execute the perfect motion all the time, but you can get very close to it because there is always some area on the fairway that you can hit. If really you are striving for perfection, you can put yourself in situation almost all the time where you can execute the perfect motion. So the issue doesn't lie really there. The issue lies in the fact that we have multiple clubs and each club have different lengths. And this creates because this creates a variation in the swing plane, with the same weight, the longer the club, the heavier it's going to be in the dynamic of the golf swing. And also, the ball is moving forward as we go. So, we are hitting less down, more up, and so on. And all of this combined bring to the same, in, uh, to the same conclusion, which is you tend to have a swing pass that is way more inside with the shorter club or the wedges and a swing pass that is way more left, way more uh, outside in instead of inside out with the longer club which cause you to actually um, swing left on the ball and, and more down. So with the shorter club where you want to actually hit down on the ball you have a swing pass that is inside out, which is primarily to hit the ball up. And with the longer club, you have a, cl a club pass that is actually hitting uh, outside in, which is hitting down with the longer club, where you, are, you want actually to hit more up on the ball, or at least with the iron, a long iron and wood, you want to hit neutral, and with the driver, you want to hit up on the ball. And so, that's why the golf is really, really hard. It's because the natural way of seeing it in the golf is completely, completely upside down. And so if you try to just do one single motion with every club, here's what's going to, going to happen. If you do it perfectly with perfect consistency, one club is going to go dead straight. Every club shorter than that is going to go left and the shorter the club, the more left you are going to get. Uh, and, and like you are going to do hooks or snap hooks. And then every club that is above that is going to slice. And the further you go, the further it's going to slice. And so with the driver, you are going to, to just put it uh, miles to the right. So, okay. Perfect. The, the perfect swing doesn't make any sense only if you want to hit slice with your driver so you have a suboptimal ball flight and it hooks with your wedges which is going to make it very tough to actually control your distance and as well as uh, the ball when it's land on the green you're going to have a ton of side spin so okay having one perfect swing just doesn't make any fucking sense 
So, but before before I give you the solution, before I give you my my thought and the different perspective on how you can fix that in your game, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. What do you think? Am I completely wrong? Am I first to think uh, that way, or is, is there anything I'm missing? Put it in the comment section. What are your thoughts about it? So there is different ways to go about how to fix that in your golf swing, depending on the way you you are the most comfortable. Uh, the, the way I see it, there is primarily three ways to do it, and uh, mine is the third one. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the, the probably the easiest one for most people because it's, uh, that's, that's probably um, what you can easily implement, enfin, quickly implement without doing any change in your swing. So you keep one swing, but you are doing like Ben Ogan is doing, and I'm going to put it just right there, which is changing your stance. Where with the short club, you are having an open stance with your, your, um, your um, wedges and so on. And with the driver, you're getting a closed stance. And with probably seven, six iron or eight iron, you have a perfectly square stance, depending which club actually you are able to hit straight all the time. And this allows you to actually switch the plane uh, pretty easily without making so much change and so on. But I've tried it. And when you really are starting to really go really deep into the mastery of the game and so on, that's not enough. For me, if I, I, I almost need to have a, a 45 degree or even more open stance with my wedges if I want to be able to do that. And almost 45 degree stance close with my driver if I want to be able to hit the ball the way I want with an op uh, absolute optimized ball flight. So for, for me, that doesn't work that. So I, I think for most amateurs golfers, that's just the best way to go about it, efficient. But uh, when you are reaching a certain level, that doesn't work. Then you have the Bryson de Chambeau <laughs> way of doing it. You just say, fuck it. I'm just getting one club, one length with every club. I just don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> so th this is a way that's work, I think. That's worked pretty well for him. So that's another way to uh, actually uh, do that. I don't like that because the issue is uh, with your wedges, you are going to have... It depends, it depends. Because uh, either you have very short clubs, so you are going to struggle with longer clubs because the clubs are very short, but with the wedges and on the short game, you are going to be really comfortable. Or you're doing the opposite, you're going to take 7 iron, but having uh, wedges that, are, that have a length of 7 iron is really weird. And it, it's really difficult to be consistent with your short game, with your wedge play, when you do that and you see Bison de Chambeau had, uh, to, uh, had to put a tremendous amount of work into his wedge in order to get good at it, just because of that. So that, that's the way. And the third way, which is... Honestly, the most difficult way, but I think this is probably the way uh, the best players are doing it, even though I think they are doing it more unconsciously than they are doing it consciously, which is to uh, tweak your swing slightly and progressively throughout your club, so you are hitting uh, extremely left with your uh, wedges, and you are eating extremely right with your, uh, I mean, in terms of swing path, in terms of club path, uh, swing direction. Uh, you are extremely right with your driver. And so this is primarily the way I do it. And uh, for, uh, this is something very new I, I, I realize about the game. And so I'm still trying to figure out how to do it efficiently. For now, I'm really about... Okay, I have four different backswing, four different downswing, and each combination of those allow me to actually hit the ball more left or more right, 
Uh, actually, no, I have um, two, back, two back strings. This is just uh, the two other are um, with the length that is actually shorter than the full back swing. But the full back swing has primarily only two, uh, two type of back swing. One which is very, I keep, try to keep the arm very in front of me, very over the top uh, with a club that is pointing uh, behind me a lot. So it, it allows me to come over the ball with a much more direct angle um, of attack and uh, towards the ball so it helped me to hit left a lot and then you have the downswing where actually I have th yes three but two that are close and uh, so also this is a parameter that allow, you to, allow me to hit more left and more right uh, and uh, adjust depending on the club but this is just because I'm I'm just getting to know that and uh, so I try to have a very distinct move in my head so I know what to do but the more I train the more I'm tr I'm pro I, I feel that my head try to feel uh, try to to get to a motion that is much more continuous throughout my clubs so it's easier for me to actually adapt depending on the club so the, the ultimate level of my story, I think, is going to be that. Is at the beginning, you're trying to okay find ways to actually make uh, the perfect club pass, swing pass. But as you go, as you progress, this is go the, the, the limitation between the, 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 the parts are going to be less and less discontinued and more continued and so then you are going to be have a, a much smoother system throughout your golf swing and you are going to be able to adapt way easier and way, which way more uh, subtlety and I think this is how you really develop a mastery of the game to have uh, no overall motion that you are mastering this is not one perfect swing this is actually 14 perfect swing for 14 clubs um, so if you like the video don't hesitate to smash the like button and if you want to see more videos like that in the future don't hesitate to subscribe and join the 54 journey so thanks you for watching and i see you next time